Hi, good evening. I'm Mauricio Lasala, Deputy Director at the Business and Human Rights Resource Center. I'm here to introduce my colleague, Rania Fassa. Uh, she is originally from Lebanon, but she has also worked and lived in Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Kuwait, Syria, United Arab Emirates, and Yemen. Before joining us earlier this year, uh, Rania was Regional Program Officer at Pax Christi, the Dutch peace nonprofit. Uh, she was based in Amman and Beirut. Among the projects that she helped advance with Pax Christi was one called Seven Iraq, a regional youth project using social media. Previously, she was Regional Monitoring and Documentation Officer with Save the Children in Jordan, and she has also worked as an academic researcher and journalist in Lebanon for a number of years. Her academic degrees are in political science, public administration, communication arts, and journalism from uh, Lebanese University. And she is currently completing a distance master in public policy and management from the University of London. Rania. Hi, I can't believe I'm all that, but yeah. Actually, I would like to introduce myself as an activist. I'm a human rights activist from the Middle East. Um, when I was interviewed and they asked me, why do you want to uh, join Business and Human Rights? Actually, I told Chris that governments and businesses have been unaccountable in the region for so long, and I think it's time to stop that. Business and human rights in this part of the world, in the, not this part, in that part of the world, actually, um, is practically inexistent. Even human rights activists and organizations and media do not really make the link very clearly. For them, they don't know anything about the Reggae principles. They have never uh, heard about the international activities uh, in this domain. So it's a complete black hole. For them, companies, it's okay for them only to do the philanthropic CSR things, and they feel that they are, oh, they're doing too much good for the people, so why do they care for other issues? So this is also one of the things that made me really take this job. Many businesses in the Middle East are owned by members of ruling families. I cover the Gulf, I mean the Gulf, the oil Gulf, the dynasties and the monarchies, so, so ruling families and governments, they even own, own all of most of businesses. We have encountered the case with um, the Saudi Aramco uh, company, which is it's an oil company owned, owned by the uh, Saudi government, and we asked them to respond to some allegations raised against their um, dismissal of some employees um, taking part in anti-government rallies. They uh, refused to respond, but the best part of it, when we were discussing that over the phone with him, he kept telling me, please go ask the government. It's not my business. Please, go ask the government. It's not my business. And I told him, actually, Aramco has fired these people. And he kept saying, please, go ask the government. It's not my business. Even local medias and NGOs tend to not to report very much on these abuses and not to name the companies um, that are implicit, partly due to the fact that they are owned also by members of the ruling families. Other issues in the Middle East are mainly um, abuses to the right of freedom of association. We have seen that in many countries, mainly Lebanon, um, Iraq, and Egypt. In Lebanon, we came across a case with Spinus, which is a grocery store in Lebanon that has um, dismissed two employees because they were trying to do, um, trying to start up uh, a union. And we went and invited uh, Spinus to respond, and they actually did. So it's there on our website if you need to look at it. In Egypt, Cadbury, which is part of Kraft Foods, has also been dismissing employees due to their um, union and freedom of association activities. And we uh, invited uh, Kraft uh, to respond to these allegations, and they did. The International um, Union of uh, Food Workers 
have came back to us with a rejoinder that we also that we get also a, res an, a second response from Kraft on it, which is good. I mean, it's not all the time that it's there are things that are bad, but. In Qatar, the International Trade Union Confederation reported that the government denied migrant workers uh, the right to form unions. Migrant, migrant workers in the Gulf is one of the major working force there, and they are really denied a lot of um, rights as uh, labor rights, but also general human rights. In Iraq, heavy intervention from the government and from ruling par political parties uh, are reportedly blocking the formation of independent unions uh, in, the, in the country. Other issues of concern is definitely migrant workers, as I, as I have uh, said. They, have, they face a lot of um, abuses, and usually all the reports we come across omit or fail to name the companies or the recruitment offices that bring these people in. And also, the government regulations uh, fall short from protecting them anyway. Gender discrimination in workplace is a prominent problem in the Middle East. Though we have seen some efforts to tackle the issue in certain countries, for example, in Lebanon, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia, there is an NGO in Lebanon called Nasawiya, and they are trying to enact a law against sexual harassment in workplace. In Lebanon, it's not a criminal act to do sexual harassment in a, in a workplace. So this group are trying to advocate for a law on such a sensitive and taboo issue in the country, and definitely in the region. Syria is increasingly coming into the radar, especially now with the high level of um, shipments of armaments inside the country. I want to mention that we have also done a lot of work on Bahrain Formula One, and we asked a lot of um, companies to respond, and actually many failed to do this. A lot of uh, details will be on our website. I would, just a final note, I think we have to engage more with civil society and businesses in the region and draw more attention to the concerns and seek company responses on all the allegations we can find. But also we need to provide more information in Arabic to make the topic on the agenda of the people. Thank you. Thank you.